Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday morning service here at Centerville Assembly of God Church. Whether you are with us here in the sanctuary or you are joining us from, your, from the comfort of your own home, welcome. It's a blessing to have you be a part of what we're doing this morning, which is uh, giving honor and praise to, the, to Almighty God. Amen. For he is worthy of our highest praise. Don't you know it? <laughs> We're going to get things started as we always do at the top of the morning with a time of praise and adoration unto Almighty God. But before we do, I'll just start things off with a quick word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this, for this wonderful, blessed morning. It is a beautiful day out. This is the day that you have made. We are going to rejoice and be glad in it, Father God. Thank you for, uh, for this time that we can be together as a, as a family of believers uh, in your presence, Lord. It is our desire to just have a close, close time of communion with you this morning, Lord, to just know of your awesome presence in our lives in this place this morning, Lord. We ask that this, uh, this time of worship and adoration, of praise and, uh, and edification can be blessed by your hand, Lord. We give this time to you and we just submit it to you and ask that you take control of everything that we, everything that we are endeavoring in this morning, Lord. We thank you. We give you honor and praise. Come, Holy Spirit, come and fill this place with your awesome presence. That is our desire, to know more of you. And we ask for these blessings to be ongoing today and beyond in Jesus' name. And the faithful said, Amen and Amen. And before we get started, Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Bet you thought I was going to forget, didn't you? <laughs> All right. Oh, don't lose heart, oh my soul, oh my soul, don't give up, there is hope, there is always hope, and there is peace in the storm, in the storm, no, don't forget, He is Lord, He is Lord of all. There is a King of glory, there is a God who saves, one who is strong and mighty, freedom is in His name. Open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise, there is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. So lift your eyes, stand in awe, stand in awe. There is one, only one, where my help comes from. There is a King of glory, there is a God who saves. One who is strong and mighty, freedom is in His name. Open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. There is a King of glory, there is a God who saves. One who is strong and mighty, freedom is in His name. Open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. As nations bow, mountains shake at the sound of just one name. Over all, Jesus reigns, I know. Nations bow, mountains shake 
at the sound of just one name over all Jesus reigns I know nations bow nations bow mountains shake at the sound of just one name over all Jesus reigns I know nations bow yes nations bow mountain shake at the sound of just one name over all Jesus reigns I know There is a King of glory, there is a God who saves, one who is strong and mighty, freedom is in His name. Open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise, there is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory, there is a King of glory, there is a God who saves, one who is strong and mighty, freedom is in His name. Open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. There is a King of glory, there is a God who saves. One who is strong and mighty, freedom is in His name. Open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. Every wound, your blood is making all things new. Your blood speaks a better word. Your blood, the measure of my worth. Your blood is more than I deserve. Your blood. Speaks a better word, speaks a better word, it's singing out with life, it's shouting down the lights, it echoes through the night, the precious blood of Christ speaks a better word, speaks a better word, your blood, your blood. Robe of righteousness, your blood, my hope and my defense, your blood forever covers me, oh, forever covers me. It's singing out with life, it's shouting down the lies, it echoes through the night. The precious blood of Christ speaks a better word, speaks a better word. It's calling, it's calling out my name. It's breaking every chain. It's making all things right. The precious blood of Christ speaks a better word, speaks a better word.
It's rewriting my history It covers me with destiny It's making all things right The precious blood of Christ It's rewriting my history It covers me with destiny It's making all things right The precious blood of Christ It's rewriting my history Yes, it covers me with destiny It's making all things right The precious blood of Christ It's singing out with life It's shouting down the lights it echoes through the night The precious blood of Christ Speaks a better word Speaks a better word Yes, it's calling out my name It's breaking every chain It's making all things right The precious blood of Christ Speaks a better word Speaks a better word It's singing it's singing out with life It's shouting down the lights It echoes to the night The precious blood of Christ Speaks a better word Speaks a better word Yes, it's calling out my name It's breaking every chain Making all things right The precious blood of Christ Speaks a better word Speaks a better word Oh, 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 oh. oh, 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 oh. It's making all things right The precious blood of Christ Speaks a better word Speaks a better word Precious blood of Christ speaks a better word, speaks a better word. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along, and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. There's nothing. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all. You still call me friend. Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. 
Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Yes, you're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better than you oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better than you Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Let the king 
never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You are good, good. never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God I love you Lord I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God your voice you have led me through the fire in 
darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God and All my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God All my life All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down Surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. 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 Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. like a river wash over me immerse me in water as deep as the sea hide me in love your healing embrace Peace like a river wash over me as 
I worship your majesty, worship your holy name, Jesus my everything, all that I am is yours. Come Holy Spirit, rain down on me. Break open the heavens, drench the unseen. Pour out your presence as I pour out your praise. Come Holy Spirit, Lord have your way as I worship. As I worship your majesty. Worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything. All that I am is yours. As I worship your majesty, worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything. All that I am. Lord, send revival, Lord, send it now, move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now in power, cover this land, like you've done it before, would you do it again? Lord, send revival, Lord, send it now, move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now in power, cover this land. Like you've done it before, would you do it again? Lord, send revival, Lord, send it now. Move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now in power, cover this land. Like you've done it before, would you do it again? Heaven break out, heaven break out. Heaven break out, 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 as I worship your majesty. Worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything. All that I am is yours, as I worship your majesty. I worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything. All that I am is yours as I worship your majesty. I worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything. All that I am is yours, Jesus, my everything. All that I am. Is yours, Jesus, my everything. All that I am is yours, Jesus, my everything. All that I am is yours, Jesus, my everything. All that I am. Lord, 
Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit. Heaven break out. Come now in power. Cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit. Heaven break out. Come now in power. Cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Heaven break out. Heaven break out. Heaven break out. Heaven break out. Come, Holy Spirit. Come in power in this place. Let us know without any doubt of your awesome presence here in our midst. Yes, come, Holy Spirit. Fill this place. More of you, Lord. Worship your majesty. Worship your holy name. Jesus, my everything. All that I am is yours. Jesus, my everything. All that I am is your So come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are his people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the past as one day in the wilderness when your fathers and forefathers put me into the test and put me to the proof though they had seen my work for 40 years I loathed the generation and said they are my people who go astray in their hearts and they are, have not known my ways therefore I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest let us sing unto the Lord a new song let us sing unto the Lord all the earth let us sing and bless his name let us tell of his salvation from day today let us declare his glory amongst the nations his marvelous works amongst all the people for great is thy lord 
and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all gods of the peoples are worthless idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in the sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord all families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring on offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in splendor and holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the Lord is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar in all that it fills it. Let the field exalt and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he comes, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the, earth, the world in righteousness, the peoples in his faithfulness, the peoples in his faithfulness. He will judge in his faithfulness, not according to our doing. Beauty and strength are before him in the sanctuary. Would you rise up your voices, whether here in the sanctuary or at home, once you give God a freely worship, the music has subsided, the lyrics, but now it is a new song that rises up from your heart unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Worthy One, the Mighty One, the All Excelsius, the Almighty Powerful God. This is the Lord that we worship and we proclaim from the very core of our hearts, hallelujah. It observes and declares his glory and majesty. There is none like Jehovah God. Oh, there is none like our Lord Jesus Christ, the one that reigns in power, majesty from eternity to eternity. You are God. There is none like you. None like you. Can you put reba no you want to express the love of the your king? You want to express the love of the, the only God? Go ahead and rise up your voice and say, Magnificent, mighty, good God, you are worthy, worthy, worthy. Yo Oh, my king, my king. From eternity to eternity, you are God. There's none like you. You are the creator of all. You've existed from all times, my Lord. There is none, none, none like you. You are, my Lord, the light of my salvation. You are the strength. You are my portion. You are, my Lord. You are my God. You are my food you are my life my essence my being oh my father my father abba 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 father in you i find all that is needed my king so we call unto you and we worship you my king we worship you if the earth declares your majesty how much more shall your greatest creation proclaim and declare your sin we're not ashamed of your we're not ashamed of you my lord we're not ashamed of what you've done 
We're not ashamed of your power, your transformation, your renovation and restoration. We're not ashamed to be called children of God. We're not ashamed to proclaim that you are the life, the truth, and the way. We're not ashamed, my King. There is power in your words. There is eternal life in you, Jesus. Oh, we have tasted and seen that you are good. You are good. You are good. Your mercies endure forever. Majesty. I worship your majesty, worship your holy name, Jesus my everything, all that I am is yours, as I worship your majesty, worship your holy name, Jesus my everything. All that I am is yours as I worship your majesty, worship your holy name, Jesus my everything, all that I am is yours, Jesus my everything, all that I am. Yours, yes, Jesus, my everything. All that I am is yours. Yes, Lord. All that I am is yours. Worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything. All that I am is your Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My everything. Thank you, Jesus. All that I am is your Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
Tere me Hallelujah. This morning while you're standing there or you're at home, again I pray in the name of Jesus that this will be a solely dedicated time unto the very Father who deserve all the honor and glory, not only this day but every day of our lives. So we lift up your name on high. Jehovah God, mighty, mighty Father and creator of all things. We come before you, my Lord, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. The only way, the only truth, and the only life. For you said, my King, my King, that Father Lord, we are flesh and we are weak and we are father lord vulnerable but you delayed before you laid before these earthly vessels my lord your mighty glorious presence your spirit and power and in truth so we come to you in the mighty name of jesus christ with repentant hearts and father yielding as we have learned only as you have shown us that you will never cast away a humble and contrite heart so i speak this morning my lord the newness not only of your day the newness of your mercies and your compassion the newness my lord of your life that may Father Lord now reach the hearts of your people. That they will be, Lord, embraced by your love and kindness. Your love and kindness, my Lord. Your love and kindness right now may touch every single person in this place. Every single person throughout the means of this live broadcast, Lord and Father that the love of God that Father exceeds all knowledge now will overflow today my Lord in the day that we chosen to honor in obedience through faith in your son Jesus Christ who is the only advocate the only lawyer who is righteous and just to cleanse to forgive to purify from all wrongdoings, my Lord, who restores to righteousness. I plead the blood of the Lamb now that, Father, we may hear and hearken our hearts to know that, Father, you are God of mercy that calls unto obedience and that has the power, my Lord, that as your people, Father, we confess that we are and we have sinned against you, my Lord. For whoever says they have not sinned makes you a liar, my Lord. But you said that through your Son, as we confess, we will be cleansed, restored. And you said you would take it away, all sin. Would you receive our confession this morning? We choose now, in this appointed time, my Lord, to repent and to receive your word of restoration today. This is the day that the day that the Lord has made. And in this day, my Lord, we have decided to draw close to the throne of God that we may find mercy and grace today in this, ta in this time of need, this appointed time, would you receive that? Would you say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for the power of the blood shed in the cross that today is still, it's still effective and continues to be effective generations and generations 
for your sacrifice of once and for all would cover all multitudes of sins. And love does so. Love covers multitudes of sins. I thank you this morning. I grant you the glory. I grant you the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, and all the people of God may say, Amen, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Won't you give a hand to the Lord? Come on, come on. Worship the Lord with your hands. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. I thank the Lord for your presence. And Father, thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Lord, for the worship. You may be seated. And we welcome the church to the house of God. Amen. Amen. This is obviously the place of congregation and the church has come to gather together. We thank all those that are watching by means of live. And uh, we also welcome you. We thank the Lord for your life and thank the Lord for his mighty presence. Amen. Quanta, how many know that the Lord is, is here in this place? Amen. Amen. Can I get an amen? The Lord is in this place. Come on. I need you to be aware and awaken of the word of God this morning. Amen. To be focused. You've come here to adore the King of Kings and to receive and to impart the most abundance of what the Lord has given you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for that worship and thank you for that beautiful, beautiful presence that is manifested amongst us. Amen. How many can feel the presence of God this morning? Amen. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. We've not come this morning to give what we have left over from the week. In actuality, Sunday is considered the first day of the week. We've come to give the best to God this morning. We've come to give all that we have that he's given us. Amen. So everything that has breath it, everything that exists within me, let it praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm, I'm putting those parameters so you may be awakened into the focus, you know, whether you have already accomplished part of the mission of your ministry this morning in worship or you have accomplished to make it here, let me tell you, there is further more of an impartation for your life. So you must come with great expectation. Amen. Amen. Great expectation. Amen. He who draws close to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. We're here to seek the Lord. Amen. We're here to see the splendor and the majesty of the King of Kings revealed to our lives. Amen. Praise God. So I'm excited for the goodness of God. The word of God continues to reveal truth to, to our lives. Amen. The word of God is speaking into our lives. You know, if you look at the context of what I read this morning, you know, it's powerful, you know, and I, 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 so you'll know, and you can, you know, just have it as a side note. You know, I read off of uh, Psalms and I read off of uh, Psalms 96. And I also read some out of the end of Psalms 96. Five, so that way you'll know where I read from. You know, I actually even read from the book of uh, Samuel, and I read a little bit in prayer from Samuel 12, 2 Samuel 12, in where David himself confessed unto the Lord openly, saying, I have sinned against God. Amen. I have sinned against the Lord. The Bible says that the Lord took away, took away. <clears throat> Excuse me. How many know that God takes away? You got to realize that God is a giver, but by giving, he takes away things. Amen? Amen. How many know that the action of taking away, it's a tag, a, an action of giving? <laughs> Are you following me? You never saw it that way, huh? The action of taking away is an action of God, of, of taking away, it's an action of giving. The Bible says that when David confessed his sin, he said openly to the man of God. You see, there's power in confessing our sins to one another. Amen? He wasn't confessing to the man of God, the prophet. He was confessing to God, but he was confessing it openly 
right? Because confession openly is confession. Confession hitting is not confession, right? <laughs> How many agree to that? So he said, I have sinned against you. I have sinned against God. And then God said, the Bible says that God took it away, his sin. Took it away, his sin. Aren't you glad that God takes away? Amen? And by that, he is given, given to us. He is giving to us. Amen? I'm going to pray this morning for the offering, and I want to say today we will not have coffee and conversations. Today's Father's Day, and we celebrate, obviously, Abba Father, and we celebrate and declare the goodness of God. Amen? And we celebrate and believe that the attributes of God are being revealed through your life as a father, whether you are a physical, actual father and have sons and daughters. Amen? or whether you are a spiritual and also, you know, mentoring father unto others. How many know that we are called to be spiritual fathers, amen? To be mentors unto others, amen? Unless you're intentional about this, you will never experience that, amen? Many people have been mentors, and God still desires for you to have mentors over your life. We all have to have mentors, wisdom advisors, amen? Men of God that walk, you know, with God and that speak and live out the word of God. They're not perfect, but they love God. You see me? And you follow me? And we all need mentors, so we all need to be also fathers and mentors to others. Amen? You would ask yourself, how many spiritual sons you have? Amen? And it's considered or believed that obviously we would categorize a spiritual father, one who helps another, amen, comes from, uh, turn from their ways to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's a spiritual father, amen? I have a spiritual father, amen? And that spiritual, and I have mentors. It's a beautiful thing to be, have the privilege from God to that he would bring people that you may be able to spiritually mentor and, and obviously um, birth them into so many wonderful experiences with the Lord as you emulate image, the image of God um, before their eyes. Amen. So today we celebrate that, and I pray that those attributes of God of a father, Abba Father, perfect father, may be seen through your life. Amen? May be seen through your life. You know, uh, I think at times we confuse the giving with the being. You understand? You know, we confuse the giving. Eh? You give, you give, you give, and you think that satisfies, you know, those who love. When in fact, God is calling us to be. And in order to be who he is, truly provides his character and it supplies needs unto other people's lives more than just giving giving physical things amen when the being of god reveals through your life is just a powerful thing amen all right just i think that's the word today we can go home and and just rejoice on that <laughs> amen I'm going to ask you to be on your feet just for a few minutes and let's pray over the offering. We want to thank God. I want to make a note, please. Uh, can everyone be on their feet? So I want to make a note today, which is important. Please take ear. Um, you know, we're going to give our offerings and our, our tithings. Um, but we are, by nature, we are givers. So we want to bless, you know, we want to bless others when they're in need. Okay, so I want to take the initiative and I want to ask you beyond your tithes, beyond your offerings, amen, or your missions giving, please, I'm going to ask you that we're going to have a special um, giving for a brother from our church that has a need. Um, he's currently away in his country. His mother had passed away recently uh, because of consequence of COVID-19, and this is David Ross. So he... We, we want to bless him and we want to help him. He's been already for a long time in his country, um, you know, dealing with this before his mother passed and even now. And uh, um, he's coming back, obviously, uh, to us. Um, but there's a lot of expenses involved, you know, in this whole thing of, of the situation, being back home, his mother passing. And on top of that, 
you know, he's been out of employment for quite a while before he left, you know. But God is Jehovah Jireh, right? And this is where we step forth and we bless our brothers and sisters in time of need. And even if they weren't our brothers and sisters and we knew of a need, which we do, we supply and we give, right? Because that's what the Lord has taught us. So I want you to take a moment and while we pray that you commit to the Lord, te comprometas con Dios para una ofrenda especial para David Ross, for a special offering for David Ross, okay? Eso es más allá de tus diezmos y tus ofrendas. This is beyond your, the tidings and your offering. We, I really want to bless this man. So, you know, give cheerfully that we can obviously make arrangements to, to, to make a check, send it to him on behalf of the entire church. Amen? This is how we do it. Amen? So we receive the blessing from you. We gather that. Sometimes we place more on top of that from behalf of the uh, administration, but we want you to give today freely. If you are here today and you did not come prepared for that, you know, you can do it online or I want you to do this for me. Can you grab me the, uh, the offering plate? Where is it? Bring it. I want you to, and give everyone, you have envelopes. Look at your seat in front of you, but Jeff doesn't have one in front of you. But behind your chair, there's an envelope, okay? You can come. You can come. There's an envelope. I want you to grab one of those envelopes. Oops, there you go. Thank you, I appreciate it. You want you to grab one of these envelopes, right? And you write your name on it. And please write there, special gift, you know, to bless David, okay, and his family. And if you, I don't want you to, I don't need you to put the money in there. I want you to make a commitment to God by doing that. You follow me? Yes. Okay? So what you put here, you either bring it, well, we don't do nothing no, but Sundays, right? You either bring it uh, uh, next Sunday or you just give it online. Amen? When you give it online, I want you to please make sure you put, you know, missions and you put David. David, just David is, or David Ross, you know, I will know. We will know, you know, uh, the, the uh, accountants will know. And then we will do so. This is just a commitment before God on a blank page, right? And saying, Lord, this is unto you to bless our brother. Amen? How many, uh, how many um, are in agreement? Okay. I'll be the first example before your eyes, okay? I, 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 um, so I want you to know that this is how we do things to bless other people. Amen? David. Amen. You know, the Bible says, give and it will be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, right? The Lord is faithful. Amen. This is the Lord's provision. And we give unto the Lord. Amen. Where he needs it and when he needs it. Amen. In obedience. Amen. So um, here, you can please stay here and, and, and hold it. Thank you. Because we don't have the table. I just don't like to put that on the floor unless it'll be a big canister. So... No one's watching you when you come and bring your envelope. Only the Lord. Amen? All right? If you guys up there need an envelope, uh, please come and grab one. I know there's two of you up there. So let's give. Esta ofrenda es especial para bendecir al Señor, al hermano David Ross. Okay? So ponga su nombre. Le pone la cantidad que Dios quiere honrar a Dios con eso. Y venga y lo trae mientras estemos orando. Okay? All right, we're going to bless David Ross, okay? Um, I don't know if Ms. Tirunesh, Violet, when you finish, Ms. Tirunesh, can you explain her to her, you know, so they can be part of the blessing? You're being invited to be part of the blessing. Are you following me? Amen to that? Amen. Okay, so praise be to God. Amen. So hold on a second. We're going to pray. Just stay there, and then just uh, we'll pray. Amen. Can you be on your feet? We're going to pray. Thank you very much. Ms. Tirunesh.
Shakasulu, we're going to pray. Pray for the offering. Pray. Stand on your feet. Thank you, Lord, Father. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Father, Lord. As Father, we know that we are hearing your voice and respond to, Father, Lord, your love, your Father, your abundance. Thank you for allowing us to be the stewards of what you Father belongs to you, Father. Thank you that, Father, we will be diligent with what you have given us, not only with the talents and the, Father, all that you have provided us, but everything that we are and whom we are and what we possess belongs to you. So, Father, we come to you, Father, and we hear your voice in the time of need to respond unto, Father, loved ones, that it's proper. And this is your will because it's in Scripture. We don't have to question your will. We believe that your will is to give and to give, Lord, abundantly. So, Father, we come and we bring to you your, our tithes and we bring to you our offerings. We bring to you our missions and we bring to you, Father, our special Father, offerings, my Lord, for the need of your people. It belongs to you. We honor you with it. Father, I thank you that you are our Father. Lord, you love the cheerful giver, and you bless, my Lord, beyond, my Lord, Father, our ability to comprehend. But you are good, God. And Father, we give to you cheerfully with honor and praise unto your name, Father, for your kingdom, and we bless the gift and also the giver. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many can give thanks to the Lord for his goodness? Amen. So let us, uh, we can be seated. Familia, thank you so much for responding to the call of God when there is a need in the body of Christ. Amen. And uh, today I wanted to share with you and briefly, today is Father's Day, and we just want to just rejoice, rejoice. How many know that we ought to be rejoicing in the presence of God? Amen? To rejoice, to have fun and enjoy our family, man. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing, you know, to have, you know, um, joyful time with your family. Amen? Um, if I ask here, you know, just out of curiosity, it just hit me for a minute now, is that... Uh, um, uh, we have, God has given us children, right? Right? Again, spiritual and physical children. I have more spiritual children than I have physical children, huh? You know, in fact, me and Miriam, we, uh, I was sharing with, with, uh, with uh, um, Robert recently, we, we would have had probably actually four children, you know. Um, yes, I was saying probably would have had four children, right? But we have two, you know, the other two are in heaven. You know, and uh, we and Robert and I were sharing a little bit about that. Some people have more than that, right? Uh, some people have five, um, six, uh, seven. Who's got the perfect number, right? Um, some people that are here have ten children. <laughs> They're already grown, right? Miss Dedonish, ten, right? Ten daughters and sons, right? So your father, uh, Shakasul, is, is a father of ten children. Uh, 10 grown-up children, <laughs> you know? Uh, I think they have the most here. Uh, I can attribute four. Jeff? I have one son. One son, <laughs> you know. Donna has two sons. So two I'm sons. Sure. So three sons all together. Um, uh, um, Juana, how many children? Three, right? Three. Yeah, but she's got many children, you know? She's always surrounded by family and she's a, a mom of many, right? And then we got the new baby that just came about, right? And such a blessing. And you've been spiritual fathers to many young ones, youth, you know? So we don't discard that, you know, as you mark your path and continue in your faithfulness. So is Miss Violet. Uh, we've been, you know, we have been spiritual fathers to so many people. You know, uh, I mean, I'm talking that we can hit the high numbers for sure. But only God has a count of those things, right? It's a beautiful thing. But you expose yourself and you just see how beautiful it is to birth forth, you know, someone you've prayed for, you believe God for, and that's a beautiful thing. So today we do celebrate Abba Father, and we celebrate, obviously, the gift of father, fatherhood, um, if I may, unto others. And today I wanted to title briefly, you know, uh, recovery, recovery in the Lord. 
Um, you know, sometimes it takes us a minute to recover in this process. I'm going to base this off of obviously scripture that is about, you know, fathers, uh, the word of God, but recovery in the Lord. You say, well, recovery. When, when you hear the word recovery, what does it bring to your mind? You know, cuando escuchas la palabra recuperarte, you know, que viene a tu mente, a tu corazón. In um, recovery, recovery is something that comes back, right? And is fully restored and reestablished and, and just comes back to the original design. Recovery. And that's just a little bit about recovery, but recovery in the Lord. Someone put a, 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 a um, Proverbs and it just went alongside also with what, what I was writing. And it comes down to this. And it was posted. Uh, so I want to thank uh, um, um, Rafael. Um, I mean, I, I hope that you're listening. So uh, Proverbs 23, 24. So it says, the father of a righteous child has great joy. The father of the righteous child has great joy. And a man who fathers a wise son rejoices with him. Amen. Rejoices with him. Now, that's a powerful statement right there, right? And I'm going sh- sh- to add on to that in addition because obviously today's a special day that we acknowledge every single day but Abba Father above all. And I want to acknowledge those attributes of Abba Father in every single father that is upon the surface of this earth. Amen. Whether they're physical, actual fathers or spiritual fathers. Hebrews 12, 7 says that endure hardship. Okay, this is a call out to all of us. Hebrews 12, 7, Hebreos 12, 7, dice, endure hardship as discipline. In, eh, 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 I, I was going to translate that one, pero permanece fiel en los tiempos de, de momentos duros a la vez que eres disciplinado, disciplinada. God is treating you as sons. Can you say that? God is treating me as son. Can you say that? God is treating me as a son. Amen? So he says, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you and me as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? Huh? Even in the natural, when we have someone that we like to bring discipline, whether it is in the arena of ministry with youth or children or in our household, we want and desire for our children and those we love to be disciplined, right? We don't want them to go through what we went through. But here it says endure hardship as discipline. It is hard to recover from moments of difficulty in our lives where we have been disciplined by God. It is hard at times. It's hard. Hey, you ever seen, you, 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 you ever seen a child? My little grandson, you know, he's innocent. His innocence, and he's learning many things at the same time, and he wants to touch it all. He wants to do it all. My grandson, when I come into the picture and show up, he wants to, the word is not show off. He wants me to give him attention. Amen? And in the process, he may do something that it's not the right thing to do, but you need to learn how to be gracious with a child. Amen? Gracious with those that may have less um, experience and knowledge in whatever area it is. And from their eyes, what they're doing is not wrong. Did you realize that? From their eyes is not wrong. So there's times that you may be doing something, you, you, each one of us, that we just don't know it's wrong before the eyes of God. That we just don't realize that, okay, maybe in the past, you know, it wasn't a bad thing to do. But in the walk with God, God has shown you he's got greater purpose for you. So now that what you did before, it was okay. But now God wants you to be growing. And now no longer what you did before, it's okay. So staying home before or doing this before, simple things. 
I gave you simple examples before that times the Lord, you know, would tell me, you know, there's times I'm going to tell you to stay with me. I'm going to call upon you. And they say, okay, let's go to the movies. The Lord is telling me, stay with me. But there's nothing wrong with going to the movies. No, it's not about the wrongness about going to the movies. It's about listening and, 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 and hearing the voice of God when he desires to what? To be with you. Amen? And then discipline is not always understood. So my grandson, when I tell him not to do something, right, because it may cause extra work. He's dirty in the TV with his hands or he's, he's uh, pounding on the TV, you know, whatever that may be. And then he hears my tone of voice change in my approach and he shies off from it, but he cannot look at me. He stays like he moves and does stuff like, you know, how do I address this? I don't know how to act on that tone of voice when I'm telling him, because he knows I love him. I've shared my love, and I approach him in proximity, and I share with him how much, how important he is to me, and how much joy he brings to me, and I bring to him, how important he is for me. Are you following me? But in that moment that he hears my voice or tone change, he knows something's not right, and that he needs to adjust. But it takes time to recover from that. You hear me? First, that he may hear not only the tone, but what am I trying to communicate to him? How does it relate to what he's doing? That might have been okay when he was just maybe smaller. Same applies to us. But now we need to learn to do it right. You follow me? But it takes us time to recover from that. Essentially, when we don't understand to hear the voice of God and to hear what's wrong and what God is truly saying, it might not be that wrong, but it could be very wrong because where you've been and what you've done cannot lead you where God has taken you. And you cannot carry with that. It's time for the newness of God. Recovery requires time. And in that, that's why we have to endure the hardship of discipline. And God is creating in us, treating us as son. Aren't you happy that God is treating you as a son? Oh, my God. Amen to that. Aren't you glad that God is treating you as a son? There is times that we don't want to be treated as a son. Huh? If I just would not need to listen to mom and dad already repeating me the same thing. Come on. Sound, sound like something common? If, if, if mom and dad would just nip it. <laughs> Is that right? I don't want to. <laughs> no, not nip it. <laughs> just so close enough. I didn't want to use the word shut it up. <laughs> <laughs> Get the idea. <laughs> you, you, uh, you think about these things, they're real. We experience this. You know, we get tired of hear, hearing the same thing and same thing. But let me tell you, when you hear the same thing, it's because something needs to be observed, noticed. Amen? Doesn't mean that everything that you're doing is wrong. It just needs to be observed so you may learn from it. And it's okay. And that's where we don't know awkwardly how to act. I feel so, so compassionate about my little grandson when he doesn't know how to act in the middle of my raising and my changing of my voice tone, tone and correcting him. We find ourselves to be in that awkward position with God. Does that make sense? We are in an awkward position when God says, when we, there's silence or something's not working out or something. I mean, don't confuse silence with God's absence and God's love. God never stops loving. Are you following me? God never stops loving. God loves you no matter what. No matter what. Whether you fall asleep, you get up or you don't, it doesn't matter. God still loves you. You understand me? Whether you come to church or not, God still loves you. Whether you do the right thing or not, God still loves you. Isn't that a beautiful thing? That doesn't justify or attributes a what? 
a condition habitual a condition where God wants to lead me out of into maturity and to know him further so love is not justifying it covers multitude of sins and just and love compels which obligates us to further amen in the Lord not stay staggering in the same thing and I think sometimes that's when we get it all kind of mixed up recovery takes time in the Lord you know and this is not a recovery of something that you need to acquire and do on your own because we certainly know that the work of the kingdom, the work of the cross of Jesus Christ at the cross was sufficient. You understand me? So your recovery is not based on your ability. Uh, this thing is still doing the same thing. Enduring hardship as discipline because God is treating us as sons. We know by nature we love to celebrate moments, right? Celebrate fatherhood, sonship, and celebrate all this. But all these things entail relationship. Can you say relationship with me? Relationship. Yeah, relationship. And in relationships, there's going to be rubs and hubs, and all these things are going to happen. And those are the things that cause you to be uncomfortable, you know? You find yourself awkward situations. You don't know how to act, but you don't need to act every time in every situation or have an answer for it. You know, sometimes it's time just to listen. Listen to God. That's why I read today and we saw in the book of Psalms, you know, that if you hear the voice of God, amen, if you hear the voice of God, if he's treating you as a son or as a daughter, and you're not the only daughter, then what a privilege. Let me hear closely, Lord. Let me shut the rest of the things that surround me that I may hear you closely, that I may learn how to recover from every moment that you're disciplining me, that I may apply the things that you're teaching me, that I may grow, grow, grow. You understand? Grow. Because if the Father rejoices huh, with great joy, in the righteousness of his child, then I want my father to rejoice. How many say amen? I want the father God to rejoice with me, right? And if he's treated me as a son, he's going to discipline me. He's going to discipline me. And in that, I'm going to have moments where I have to recover and recover from understanding. Why is he saying no, no right now or to have a better way? Or this is what I'm teaching you now. And it substitutes what you've practiced all your life. Say all your life. Ooh, and you don't like that one. That's the same thing of hearing all the time mom and pop telling us, dookie, 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 and repeating the same thing. Right? We don't want to hear it. But if you think that your father and your mother earthly know and desire the best for you, how much the heavenly father, huh? How much more the Heavenly Father? Huh? But we love the part of we say, Father, I need this, I need that. And he says, ask and it shall be given to you. And I'm going to tell you, you've already received what God has ordained for your life. you just not there that you may see it, that you may um, embrace it, and that you may live it out to the fullness. Because what? In maturity, it's just going to tell you that it's given for his glory and his honor. And that requires growth. That requires growth, and we are on the way. But thank God that even in the middle of enduring this hardship, it is discipline. That is the definition of this. Not because of the reason of the wrong decisions, but more than anything of hearing and treating us as a son, right? God wants to treat you as a son and a daughter continuously because he desires to discipline you. Think about for a moment Jacob. You think about Jacob. Jacob, huh? He's a generational blessing proclaimed by God that he would be, that they would be what? Multiplied, right? Like the stars in the in the in the in the heavens, and like the sand in the ocean. Multiply. So Jacob, how do you see, how do you think uh, a Jacob recovered? Boy, what a recovery <laughs> to be able to recover from the experience. We all have unique, distinctive experiences with the Lord in the way he's disciplining us. And in Jacob, 
it's no any less. We can mention a few as we will, but ultimately, look at Jacob and look at the actions that Jacob did, not only the negative part of that, but what led him to be what? Disciplined by God. And to be what? To be able to recover. You understand? Recover. The Bible tells us in the book of Genesis how um, 33, how Jacob in the fast forwarding after he had deceived his brother, deceived his brother from his birthright, from the anointing and the blessing of his father, because he took advantage that his father was blind. And he dressed himself as his brother, and he, 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 he wanted to smell. He put his, his, his uh, clothing of, of hunter, and he wanted to smell. He went all the way to deceive his, his, his father in order to, um, to take his brother's birthright. Are you, are you, you hear the degree of this? How do you recover for something like that after you've done such a thing, you know? And it doesn't make us look us any better whatsoever, for we all have a story of God's testimony in our lives. But here, fast forwarding, it, he goes about doing his life. He does all these things, but he has to have an encounter with God. Say encounter with God. Encounter with God. (laughs) Even Jacob, that his father was a fearful man of God, that had his weaknesses and all that. He grew up in 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 a place where they worship and they bow before the living God, Jehovah God, he himself had to have an encounter with God. Does that sound familiar? We all do. And in that fact, he has an encounter with God, and he finds himself fighting with God, fighting with the angel of God. And in all that fast-forwarding, now he's hearing the voice of God. He finds himself that now God is causing him to repent, say repent. That's why repentance is so important. And he finds himself that he would put him in a position, say, discipline. Say discipline. Discipline Discipline for a reason why, that he may align himself with a repentive and a contrite heart. And that he would receive what? The blessing of the Lord. But without a humble, repentive heart, he was not aligned to be able to receive the overflow and experience the next level of the glory that God had designed for his life. So in all that, he finds himself in this path of this road that God takes him that he may obviously be in a path of recovery. Say recovery. So he makes it through all this path and eventually he has his own family and he pays. You know he pays. He said pays seven years of hard work for the woman he loves and then he is deceived. You believe that the man, whatever he sows, he's going to also reap? <laughs> wow. Let's make a clear example of what God does to discipline his people. Amen? Amen. And he disciplines this man in a manner that he, now he's after something his lo- he loves. <laughs> when you love something, you'll do anything for it. And God knows it too. <laughs> and you'll use that as the path to lead you to love him above all things. <laughs> That's beautiful. So you want a job, you want a car, you want this, you want that. God is that. It's just like, it's like, a, like when, when you're chasing after, you know, shadows and he puts it right in front of you. And you're going after it, but that's you. You want it so bad, but God is leading you to what? To encounter him. He deceived everyone. His father he, f- he, led, he was led by comments and suggestion of his mother, and he deceived his brother and his whole family. Come on, the whole generations to come. But he couldn't deceive God. Are you following me? And everything that God had ordained, he did it so he can take him to a place of recovery. But in order for that to take place, there had to be a genuine repentance. That's why David said the words. He says, I've sinned against you. So this man made it to a place, Jacob, where he just abhorred himself. He couldn't take it to be so far apart from God because when there's lack of repentance, you know, this is grieve in the heart of men, which is part of the discipline also and repentance that God wants to restore your life, take you to the path of recovery. That's a beautiful thing. It's okay to remain there, not sometimes, not at times, not when I feel like it, but to be in the path 
If you want to hear the voice of God, you're going to hear what you don't like, what you don't want, what you don't prefer. But it's part of the process of God working in your heart. Just have a humble heart, a contrite heart. Follow the will of God. Stay steadfast. Stop being so hard of heart. Stop having a stone of heart. Ha, say no to rebellion and align yourself with the will of God. People are still looking for the will of God. I don't know where. It's plasmated, written, and it's documented in the scripture of God, in the word of God. And when it's spoken, it comes to life when you receive it with a humble heart. It's got to be a humble heart because if you don't receive it, you don't hear what the Lord is saying. You hear what you want to say. See it here. Does it make sense? The, the word of God, no matter how you release it, is speaking. But a humble heart is the one that receives it and that grows from it. You understand me? Children pick and choose. But men that want and desire to honor God, they go face on and say, Lord, teach me, discipline me. You know, not because they like to be just just uh, um, uh, um, chastised, but because they want to please God. You see, there's a difference between being chastised for the chastising, but there's a there's a reason when you're being disciplined to honor the God that you would become what the Word of God says right here. Here it is. That you may become a righteous child that brings joy to his father. Huh? That's the desire. That's the plan of God. Huh? Jacob makes it to a place where now he finds himself fast-forwarding, you know. And he calls that place Bethel and then El Bethel. And then all of a sudden now he's got his family. He's got all these things. But he has an unresolved issue in his heart. All that he had repented to God. Listen to this. He had asked God to give him, forgive him, right? But there was a moment that God was ordaining so he would meet the very person that he ought to tell him. I wronged you. Huh? That's why when you come out, you remember Mother's Day? I, I realized that Father's Day is just, it seems like I've, I've, we sometimes focus more on Father's Day than mother, Mother's Day than Father's Day. When God, you know, God is, is, is you know, it, it, he's a balanced God. He loves everyone, you know. It's, it's about your heart. And he fathers, mothers, and he is the ultimate father for all of us. But what I'm getting to is that, here you find yourself that when you walk out of a place like today and you come to a realization, you know, do I have to restore something and recover from something that I have to confess? That has to do with my relationship with my dad. That has to do with the relationship with my mom, with God above all. It's easy to say, so to speak, I'm sorry, God, and turn and, and, and not so easy, but, you know, in, in a repentive heart and humble heart. But how do I go and face that person that I've hurt? Oh, that person that really hurt me. Oh, yeah, I can look at my father in my face, you know, but by God's grace, he's alive in my example of my father. He's 84 years old. I can look at my father in the face and I can tell him I love him. But how many things have I put under the rug, you know, that I don't really want to deal with because I don't really want to deal with the discipline of the Lord in my life. And that's what we call in the scripture the part where it becomes for us a hardship to endure as discipline. But the Father wants you to face that and to be honest. You understand? And if it hurts and it bothers and it creates anger, it's time to confess it. And it's time to let it go. Hey? Sometimes we dig and we have buried things so deep down, we don't know they're even there because we dug and we put them away. We don't want to deal with them. We never wanted to revisit them, you know. But it's been covered by the blood of the Lamb and you confess it, but let it be. But if you need restoration and healing, let God do that. That you can face the person, whether you're the one or the oppressor or the person was the oppressor or the circumstances, whatever it may be. Because the Bible says that if someone has something against you, he says, go and what? Ask him and ask for forgiveness. Put your offering down and go and ask them for forgiveness. But wait a minute, they're the ones that have something against me. I don't have anything against them. But the Bible says, go and say, forgive him, forgive him. So the world is upside down. The scripture is in right, true. Which one will you follow and obey? So 
walk out of this place recovering and bringing reconciliation because you have been given the ministry of reconciliation, my family. Go and restore. Restore. God has called us to be restorers. And then here comes Jacob, and after all this, he's got a lot of family. Now he's got, not, he's got two official wives and all these made slaves that were given to him because they couldn't have babies, some of them. That's, it's just wild, right? That's obviously, that was in the Old Testament. You have one wife, you know, and you honor her, and, and that's what a, a, a husband does. Amen? And, uh, and you treat her like, like, uh, um, um, like a, the, the, the weaker vessel, but like Christ treats, his, treat, treats the church, you know? And uh, um, you love on her, of course, and you uh, share the, the word of God that you may present her as the church cleansed, purified, as the church will be presented of, of Christ. So you shall do with your wife, the Bible says. So you are a priest in your household, and you're called to instruct your, do- your wife into the ways of the truth of the word of God. Amen? That's powerful. So here comes Jacob, and he finds, he shows up, and he knows he's going to meet with his brother. And this, this man is fearful of what his brother's going to do because his brother's gone to do his life too, and he's become strong, and, and there's a promise for both of them. How many know there was a promise for both of them? Amen? So the Bible says that his brother Esau had sent 400 men. And this man said, he's going to destroy us. He's going to kill us. So I was asking the Lord, but why 400 men? And then I was just, you know how it is. I just love when the Lord just starts teaching me certain things. And, you know, what's that mean? 400 men. Could have been 600, 300. Could have been 400. But it was 400 men. Why 400 men? And this man was trembling. And in this, you know, what's that mean? What's the number four? Because the Bible has meanings about four. And, you know, when I look in more into it, you find out that, the, you know, God created, you know, the heavens and the earth. By the fourth day, he had already created all things and split it, sort of put, you know, the ocean apart from the earth, the sea, uh, the, the, uh, the sky from the, you know, the night from the day. All the, and what in fact was happening is that in, God was creating the four seasons. Say four seasons. <laughs> God created four seasons, right? And you know the four seasons, every time they come around, what do they do? They're they're appointed times, right? They're that moment appointed where there's a shifting, a changing, amen? (laughs) And that's powerful. So this man is being confronted with an appointed time that God ordained. In fact, the, the matter is that after these appointed time were literally translated means the appointed time. That word in, the, in, in Genesis 114 means appointed time in, in the original of, of Hebrew. So it goes into the very illusion that in the festivities that God eventually gave for the Israelites to celebrate, in that, that it became seven. seven seven in number but 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 the fact is that the seasons were declaring an appointed time and and watch this because even in the fourth in the uh, uh, commandments the fourth commandment in the old testament of the ten commandments was and you shall keep it the holy sabbath of the day of the lord so god was leading him to a place of an encounter of an appointed time that he may find already once and for all rest in the Lord, that he may find peace in that encounter with his past, and that he may resolve it once and for all, because God had an ordained moment. You understand? God has a plan. Sometimes we run because we don't know what recovery is in the Lord. We run. I don't want to see that person. You know, I don't, how am I going to act? I haven't seen him in a long time. The last time we met, it wouldn't go, it didn't go too well. All these things, you got to know that God has a beautiful plan. This man feared that his brother was going to kill him, and not for no reason, you know? He had taken his birthright. Are you following me? He taken his birthright, you know? But the Bible says 
that Jacob lifted his hand and 400 men, and he didn't know what to do. He said, I'm going to divide the camp. I'm going to send the women and children in front. You know, said if they attack that camp, there were so many of them, uh, 400 men, right? These are men. It says it clearly. And then he said, well, if they attack my camp, they'll attack. I'll send my wives and my children first, right? You see that? And then the other camp, I'll stay behind with them. And if they attack them, we'll be able to run and escape. <laughs> you see all this that if this man is just thinking, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, what, what am I going to do? I'm gonna, he's going to kill me. That's what he was thinking. He's going to kill me. So he plans all this, and then when he makes it to his brother, he starts giving him gifts. I'm talking about thousands of things, sheeps and such, and he starts giving him things. And he says, what is all this? Esau says. But the Bible says that Jacob bows before him. Listen to this. Seven times. Seven times this seven is all over. All over. Seven times. And he says, Master, Master, Master. You know what that is happening right there? My God, you got to see the revelation of God. What's happening is that he is acknowledging the authority of God that was ordained for that man and that he wanted to steal from him. You cannot steal, take something that doesn't belong to you. But if you know your identity in Christ and you allow recovery to happen, you will see the beauty of God just flowing through your life in a mighty, loving way. I want that. You see, I don't want Jeff's. I don't want, um, I want God's d design for my life. You see? But we do it together. And what he was missing is that he had broken that communion with his brother out of what? Selfish, you know, and deceiving manner. Because he thought that he needed to do that. Otherwise, he would become the second most respected man of a household. It wasn't like that. God had a plan for Jacob. You understand that? As he has for Esau. Huh? But he bowed seven times. He was acknowledging God. Say God. God. My God. Yes. He was acknowledging God. And you can read it there in Genesis 33. It's so powerful, you know? The fact of the matter is that he offered to his brother many offerings. You got to listen to this portion. This has a, I'm going to probably cut it, you know, into the essence and, and because it's so much more. You know, he offered him so much goods. He said, give. He started giving, giving. Why? Because that was easy. He had all that in abundance that he knew that it was God that had given it to him. But he thought also he had worked seven years for one and seven years for the other. But the fact of the matter is that he tried to fill the eye of his brother with the abundance before his eyes. And his brother, he says, what is all this? I've, this is my offering to you, my Lord, my master. This is, and he bows seven times. The Bible says that it's almost like it was already, I say almost, it was already ordained. E Esau immediately grabbed his brother. He grabbed his brother in his neck and he, he started embracing him. Embracing him. You imagine Jacob, the shock of this man, because all these thoughts were going through his mind. He had minimized the power of God. You understand? He had not known the love of God, how it extends beyond his ability. You follow me? You got to understand that the love of God goes beyond your ability. But God desires to recover, restore you recover that you may be may, may, may walk into a recovery in a manner that you can be go to the next level that God has ordained listen to this it is not when God created all things the Bible says that the whole creation these all these things you see all these things you look around birds everything all the all of it declares the glory of God all of it declares, none of these things seek their own things. They declare the glory of God. What they were designed for, they're declaring the glory of God. Did you know that? Everything, everything, I need you to hear specifically what I'm saying. Everything that has been 
uh, um, originated, created everything that you see. All things declare the glory and the majesty of God. It acts according to what God ordained it. <laughs> it, it. It walks in absolute and total obedience. Are you following me? For you and me, be, it, I need you to step out of commonality. You know, something. sometimes we see things too common without having the creative power of God in it. Elohim. Well, a tree gives uh, fruits because and leaves because it's a tree. No, it's glorifying God. He created it and he ordained it for the purpose. And he will never, the tree will never ever, listen to this, will never get out of his obedience to what God created it for. Now, that's powerful. That's why he went by that tree and it had no fruit when Jesus walked by. Okay, he saw it once. What did he Created the tree to give fruits, to give shadow, to give all these things that we, beyond our ability to know the love of God and understand the knowledge. But he created it for that reason. When he saw coming around that the tree weren't doing, what did he do? He cursed the tree. Enough. What did he do to the serpent? He cursed the serpent for not doing what it was designed. Huh? You see what I'm saying? When we don't do what we're supposed to do according to God's ordained plan, what he designed you for, you better be aware because God is a blesser, but he who taketh, who giveth can also and will also taketh away. And you wonder, why is the process of recovering so long and lethargic and so difficult? Um, I can tell you that. Endured hardship as discipline. God is treating you as a son. And what son that is not discipled, I mean disciplined by his father. A father desires a righteous child to be greatly joyful of him because he rejoices out of his wise son. Are you following me? The only creation of God that deviated, listen to this, from God's purpose was Lucifer. Lucifer, because of his greed and desire to be like God, he stepped out of the realm of his ordained purpose. You hear me? I'm not trying to make you understand every little part of that because that's really deep. It's God's creation, right? And he falls out of the grace of God and out of the presence of God, and he's cast it out. So now he's roaming the whole earth and the world trying to seek what he can deceive of God <laughs> because he is deceiver. So he finds the God's greatest creation, and he influences God's greatest creation. Huh? Because if he deceived the cre greatest creation of God, he knew the ordained, <laughs> ordained purpose of the creator for his creation and the authority that he delegated unto that which he created in men. Now, he didn't tell the cow, rule over the earth, right? He didn't tell the chicken, check out your way and check it all out and be the, no. He said to men, rule over it. So the enemy, when he found himself lost, he went after the greatest creation of God. So it wasn't the many things of the gifts that Jacob would bring unto who? Esau. Esau represented God. That's why he bowed before him seven times. Hmm? Oh, let me just remind you. The word of God says you shall bow before no other, right? No other God. It don't matter what that God looked like, right? The God can look like a car, it can look like a job, it look like a whatever it is. Did you know that the Indians and the four people from the past, they bow before the sun, before the moon? You shall not bow, and you call it God, that's idling. Do no bow before no other God. So here is Jacob, and he's bowing before the very brother that he deceived. But Esau was the one that by ordination of God was supposed to be and is 
the one that has been separated at the firstborn. He could never replace that. Esau was the firstborn. Huh? He can try and deceive that, but he could not change God's ordained purpose. Are you following me? Oh, my God. So he brings him all these gifts. Huh? To what? To convince him. God doesn't need you or me to bring any gifts to him. And he gives to him. God doesn't need you. He needs your heart. And what he was running from was recovery in the heart. He could not handle something that he was bearing from his past. Although he had encountered God. He had recovered from a relationship with God. He still needed to confess that very thing that was down core in his soul. Because the moment he would confess it and confess it and recover and face it. That moment, that deceiver would die. God is seeking for your, the greatest creation, where it is he deposits your ability to have free will. Say free will. For the free will to hearken so we can hearken under the voice of God so heartedly. Surrender, humble, and contritely. Repent in obedience. That's why the word of God, have you hearkened to the, to the living God and abide in his word? That's the key right there. It was the key that Jacob needed to experience. He could not get to that point. He thought he can fill it with all the things that he had. You cannot fill God's plan, desire, and pleasure with all that you have because he gave it to you. He's after your heart. He's after your heart because where your treasures are, that's where your heart is. You ever watch a movie and they start putting commercials? Not now with the new technology. Commercials are a thing of ancient, right? Don't put a commercial in my thought because that's, you know, that's beyond me. But you have, uh, you know, uh, certain apps that give you commercials, right? And you're like, come on, pass that commercial. I want to see the ending. So does God. So does God in your life. So Stop giving God what he's not asking you for. He's after the heart. He's after the recovery. David, David found himself to say, I've sinned before you, my king. This is the man that was called in the New Testament to having a heart after God's heart. Do you hear this? This is not contradicting, contradicting to one thing to the other. David had a similar experience. Recovery may take some time, but when you allow the work of the Father in you as a son to disciple, to mentor you, to discipline you, recovery can take a moment. You can be a little bit at odds. Come on and join me, Jeff. I'm going to bring it to a landing to 747. You know, there's a lot of things that you can take. Obviously, these things were written so we may learn from it. Isn't that? The Bible says that. These things were written so we can learn from it. We can learn. There are many answers to the reason why. Why did David, God chose David? <laughs> it's the same thing that I would say. Why did God chose Jeff? <laughs> Me. I'm going to talk about Jeff. Gee, gee. You know, I'm beyond that. I just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow, obey, and believe, and trust the Lord. Leave him the consequences. But why did he love David and loves us so much? And you can see that it's not something to be wrong by looking at. What are these, some of the things that you find yourself in what represents the character of this man? that really we can identify with it. I read it and it was just like, I need to say it before I even comment on it. But here it is. David was courageous. How many know that David was courageous? What a bold man. <laughs> Bring it on. He would fight like there's no tomorrow. Can I exhort you to fight like there's no tomorrow? Do you know why David fought? 
David didn't fight for victory. He fought for God. You see, man? He was courageous. Oh, David was passionate for the Lord. David was obedient to the Lord. David was a worshiper. You know, all these things are describing, you know, things that are going to obviously be done in heaven for eternity. David, David, listen to this. David had a repentant heart. Un corazón de arrepentimiento. You see, I want to give you a, a, a note here. It's not how many times you fail God. It's how many times you actually ask God for forgiveness. And that you turn from that way to please God. You see, the moment you do not ask God for repentance for something, even just to make sure you're right before God, examine my heart, Lord, see if, see if there's any iniquity in me. You understand? And lead me in the path of what? Salvation, restoration, recovery. That's what the psalmist says in 138, 23, and 24. Huh? So what is that leading to? A repentant heart. A repentant heart that leads to humbleness, contriteness. He repented from sin openly. He had a great character. He had a zeal. Listen to this. He had a zeal to building the church. He had a zeal to build a church. In fact, he wanted to build a church. I'm sorry. He wanted to build the temple of God. Huh? He had a zeal. You know what zeal is? Oh, my, my. I think courageousness comes along with zeal. And zeal is embraced and covered in courageousness, boldness. But if you had to pick one thing and one thing that was the core of all who David maybe also can conclude about Jacob in the sense of recovery, it is the fact that it is one core reason God loved David. God loved David. And let me tell you this. We, we have a hard time with simplicity. But this is it. It's as simple as that. It's because God loves us. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. You see, love will put you in a different perspective of things. It will drive you in the right direction and not in the wrong direction. It will never deceive you. It will lead you to the right path. Love perfects you. Love will lead you in the path of recovery. You see, God chose him as he chose you, and that's what you see, attempting to do and idolize any, idolize anything else is just way a little bit over heels, you know? I'm going to ask you to be on your feet. Listen to David's prayer. Hear a just cause, O Lord, attend my cry. Give ear to my prayer from my lips, free of deceit. From your presence let me vindicate. Come. Let your eyes behold the right. You have tried my heart and I have visited me by night and I have been tested. You have tested me and I have, you will find nothing. I have purposed that my mouth will not transgress with regard to your works of men. My word of my word of my lips. Avoid the ways of violence. I will call upon you, Lord, for you will answer me, O oh God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my words. Wanderers, show your steadfast love, O oh Savior, of those who seek refuge from their ad ad adversaries at the right hand. Keep me as the 
apple of your eye. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked, from those who do violence. My deadly enemies who surround me, they close near my hearts in pity. In their mouths they speak arrogantly. They have now surrounded my steps and they set their eyes to cast us to the ground. The Lord will be like a lion eager to tear as a young lion lurking in, in ambush. Arise, O Lord, confront him, subdue him. I repeat that because it wasn't like that. He is a lion like a lion who eager to tear and a lion lurking in, amb in ambush. But arise, Lord, confront them, subdue him, deliver my soul from the wicked, from men by your hand, O oh Lord, from men of the world whose portion is in this life. You fill their womb with treasures. They are satisfied with children and they leave their abundance to their infants. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness when I awake and I shall be satisfied with your likeness. Did you hear that last statement? Listen what he's saying. You, he's talking about his enemies. You feel, fill their wombs with treasures. And they're satisfied with children. And they leave their abundance to their infants. But as for me, says David, I shall behold your face in righteousness when I awake. And I shall be satisfied with your likeness. Hmm. The sufficiency of God. The sufficiency of God. I hope that you hear today that the enduring of the hardship as discipline. God has treated us as sons and then as such a father disciplines his son. God desires for you to be able to recover from his correction in your life. God desires for you to embrace and uh, repentance and continuous you know, longing to the presence of God to be able to bow before him continuously. But the seven represents in holiness and in true submission and honor and worship under the king to say, my master, my master, Lord of all creation, I want to honor you in obedience. Can we pray this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, my King. Thank you, Jesus. Do you hear the voice of God speaking to your life today, this morning? I read the scripture that was from Psalms. And it said these words. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to. Today, if you only, you would hear the voice of God. Do not harden your hearts. Sometimes God is after that thing in your, in your heart. That thing that's causing. It makes it hard for you to come and recover. When you hear God correcting you, or you hear God and you seem to know the truth and you're not practicing the truth and you know what it is to walk in love and, and to really be intentional about certain things, you know, as part of the body of Christ. Don't feel awkward. Don't run from it. Don't be the Jacob or the David. But allow recovery to happen in your heart, as you may say to the Lord. Lord, search my heart. Examine my heart. See if there is any iniquity in me. 
But you've said there's nothing good in the man. But I pray this morning, my King, that I'm able to face, accept people the way they are, love on them, encourage them, embrace them, be a word of encouragement uh, that comes from your truth, uplift them in prayer, rather than a complaint that I may have a word of prayer to cover them in the blood of the Lamb. There's a world of, of, of just acting upon wrongdoings and hurting each other. We're not that world. We are of God, and you are of God. Can we pray? Can we bow our heads, and can we pray? Can you be sincere with God and not draw away that he may lead you to recovery? Think about that one person, that other person, or think about unresolved matters or even about something that you are not doing because you've chosen to isolate yourself thinking that's the right way to handle this doing the Jacob kind of act you go through life without resolving that you don't know what it is to be um, steadfast faithful to the Lord today you are tomorrow you're not you know uh, you just don't know when God starts correcting you, you don't know how to act because you already realize, man, I've wronged God again. I've done the wrong thing and I realize this. Sometimes we show to be unsteady, inconsistent in the Lord. And we leave people out there. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you may consider, Lord, our humanity, that you know that we are made of dust. This body is made of dust. Well, our spirit desires to long and, and honor you, my King. We have been given this so amazing commission, Lord, to live as sojourners on this earth. But you've given us the power of the Holy Spirit. And by Christ Jesus, you have shown us victory in, 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 in the Son, in the only Savior of our lives. And that we will have affliction and we will face circumstances. That's a part and that's a reality. But we can live in peace and we can overcome in the middle of all this affliction. But my Father, you, Father Lord, will cause for me to be disciplined in this walk because you treat me as a son. And you say these words. But I want to follow results in what the book of Psalms and Proverbs says, my Lord, that I will be, Father, bringing to your heart, my Lord, joy. Not just joy, but great joy. That you may rejoice in us. That we will walk with wisdom. Lord, can you help us recover? Can you help us see clearly that we we are victorious in you and that we are overcomers that we don't need to run from the circumstances that we don't have to present this image or bring gifts to impress you or anyone else would so matter but we all need to just be father sincere of heart just my lord serve you with all our hearts honor you with all our hearts because that's what you are seeking I declare the blessing of the Father the Son the Holy Spirit upon your people and declare Father the power of restoration recovery over their lives my Lord lift up every burden right now that they think that they need to accomplish things in their own strength my Lord but there is a place that we reach that is the Sabbath my Lord the fourth commandment that is fulfilled in loving you with all our hearts and all our Father, mind and strength. And it's fulfilled, my Lord. The law is fulfilled, all fulfilled in love, in that truth. You. So my King, my King, know that, Father, let your people know that they are accepted, they're loved, and that, Father, they will, Father, recover as you continue to guide them and discipline as a son and as a daughter. I bless them. I declare now that every weight that Father overwhelms them, 
Lord, that comes from sinful matter of thinking I need to achieve or be this way or that way in order to be accepted by you, God, or by your people, by your body. I, Father, Lord, right now, cast it out, renounce to it in the name of Jesus. Lay your burdens down. Take the yoke of the Lord, which is light, and learn from him now. Let me tell you, Jesus came to break the yoke right now in the name of Jesus to set you free and to be free, free indeed. And to walk in that freedom, not for your own desires, but that you may live it to honor and glorify him in service unto the Lord, not unto yourselves. I thank you, Lord, for the power of your restoration and recovery. I thank you, my friend, for you are good and your love endures forever. I bless your people. Let them go and, Father, be a testimony of your wonders, your miracles, and your works. In Jesus' mighty name. And all the people may say amen and amen. I want to thank everyone. We covered the, Miriam gave me a note. We are able to bless this young man and his family with uh, with $450. We'll probably put a little bit more on top of that. I know that that in monetary uh, converted into, I don't know what the, the coin is there, or, you know. But I'm sure it'll be a blessing for them. Thank you. God bless you for your giving. And let's go forward, continue to doing good. All right? If you are a father or you are calling the things that are not as they were, we have something we want to give you, Miriam. So if you want to come, fathers, and, and receive it, and we're going to pray for the fathers. Yeah. All right? So come on. Papa, papa. Uh, no, está bien. Se lo doy. Come, fathers, we want to pray for you. Amen. We can uh, thank you, everyone, for watching through Facebook and through our mainstream. We love you. Yeah, and we thank you, Lord. We're going to pray for the fathers. Yeah, future fathers, present fathers. Come on. And, uh, huh? Uh, King. Adrian? Kevin.